The purpose of wedging is to mix the clay and get rid of air pockets. Please write this on your worksheet now. Wedging, step number one. First, you need to get up out of your chair. You need to stand up in order to use enough force to actually make the wedging work. Then you're gonna pat your piece of clay into a ball. Most likely it was cut with a wire from a larger block of clay. So it'll be kind of in a, a cube or a rectangular shape. So we're gonna pat it into a ball and that's also gonna remove some extra moisture or water that it might have on it that would cause it to stick to the table. Step number two, throw the clay onto the table hard enough to flatten one side. Notice how I used the weight of the clay to help me out. I dropped it from about a foot off of the table, one to two feet off of the table, and I didn't really need to throw too much. So you can see how the top is still rounded, but that one side um, is flattened. What you don't want to do is throw it so hard that you turn it into a pancake. Um, once you do that, what's going to happen, you can see around the edges that it's going to stick to my table like that. And that's going to just give me more work. I'm going to have to clean up after that. So it's not worth it to slam dunk it throw really hard because it's just going to create more work for yourself. So you don't want any pancakes. Just want to throw hard enough that we're flattening one side. Since I added that water to clean up that mess, having a little bit of problems with sticking since the table is now a little bit more wet. Yet another reason to avoid doing the pancake. This is step number three. I'm rotating the piece of clay and throwing again. Step number four, I can count, I promise. Um, we're gonna be repeating that at least 10 times to form a pyramid type shape.
So we've got a rough, roughly triangular or pyramid type shape. As we're doing this, have you noticed any dry clay um, forming on your table? What you're going to want to do is wipe that away right away. That If that dry clay is getting into the moist clay that you're working with, it's, um, it's going to make the texture not as good. It's going to be harder to work with. Now for a piece of clay that's just straight off of the large block of clay, 10 times is probably enough for wedging. But if you're using clay that's already um, been formed into something else, like you made it into a little bowl but it got messed up so you need to do it again, you're going to need to wedge more than that. So it kind of depends on what type of clay you're getting um, and if you have already formed it into something else and you're just re-wedging to fix your mistakes. Okay, I feel like this has been wedged properly. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is cut it with a wire. If the wire has any dry clay on it, you're going to need to wipe that off. Again, dry clay is our enemy here. With the wire, you're going to want to hold it nice and nice and tight there so that it's a straight line. You're pulling it tight and then you're going to just go right through the clay. If you hold it too loose, it's not going to cut the clay easily like that. Now this is perfect. We don't see any air pockets. I'm going to show you what an air pocket looks like so you know if you didn't wedge properly. So the perfect way to make an air pocket is to go like that and smush the two pieces of clay together because that air is going to be trapped inside there. So I'm just trapping tons of air pockets in there for the sake of this demo. This is a bad idea. Again, we're going to wipe off that wire, cut into the clay. Wah, wah, wah. This is what you don't want to see. All these darker spots, even the really tiny ones, are air pockets and in the kiln, those would explode. Bad news. So this is what you do not want your clay to look like. You want it to look nice and smooth. No air pockets.